In the Niobrara River Valley, there is a place where even time could go to catch its breath. A place where millions of years ago, an ancient ecosystem thrived, but unfortunately, it also died. Today, this landmark is one of America's most remote national parks. Created by Congress in June of 1965, Agate Fossil Beds National Monument is a convergence of natural, cultural, and American history. It was set aside to preserve the unique paleontology, the associated geology that was found here, and then also as a venue to display and care for a very noted collection of American Indian artifacts. The origins of the park are tied to a 19th century cowboy named James Cook. Cook came to the Panhandle as a backcountry guide when the state of Nebraska was new and the Lakota people were being pushed to reservations in Dakota Territory. He happens to be at the Red Cloud Agency when one of the uh, premier paleontologists, O.C. Marsh, was there meeting with the Oglala and other Sioux tribal chiefs and elders. In 1874, as the Black Hills Gold Rush was underway, paleontologists were combing the Great Plains, searching for fossils during what is called the Great Dinosaur Rush. This is the same time that uh, European Americans are finding gold in the Black Hills, and so uh, the Indians are not particularly disposed to let Marsh and his party pass. In the midst of those discussions, James Cook was called on because it was suggested that he knew enough Lakota that he could interpret. And so he was able to prevail on Red Cloud and the other assembled uh, Indian elders that uh, O.C. Marsh wasn't interested in gold. That in fact, he was hunting for fossils. Cook's skillful mediation of the dispute left a lasting impression on the Oglala chief. It also gave Cook his first glimpse of the emerging science. These two things would later play important roles in his life. James Cook went on to take a job at a ranch south of Harrison and then fell in love and married the rancher's daughter. James and Kate were out riding and they spied some glittering uh, material on the ground. They thought they were just uh, pony bones or something like that, maybe associated with an American Indian burial. The bones the young couple discovered would turn out to be some of the first Miocene mammal fossils discovered in America. But it would also be 20 more years before the world would know about them. In 1904, a paleontologist who had been working uh, north of here in northern Sioux County, James Cook prevailed on him to come up here uh, to the Bone Hills and see the fossils. And the story runs that the paleontologist raced all the way back to the ranch house, told his assistants, put the horses and the wagons in the barn, we're staying for a few days. There was a period of uh, 20 years where various institutions uh, from largely in the East, uh, but Yale, Harvard, uh, the Carnegie Museum, the American Museum, those paleontologists were keenly interested in the large, very well-preserved fossils that they could find here. The fossils were discovered in two lone hills. One became known as Carnegie Hill, and the other, University Hill. Erwin Barbour, head of the University of Nebraska Paleontology Department, spent several summers excavating that site. Most of the fossil excavations here uh, by major institutions were over by 1923. The hills contained unusual looking animals that roamed the Great Plains 18 to 23 million years ago the sloth-footed Calicothere moropus, the small antelope-like Stenomylus camel, the North American rhinoceros called Monoceros, the paleocaster, a beaver that dug corkscrew burrows, Deodon, a giant hog-like scavenger, 
and Daphinodon, or bear dog, a carnivore with bone-crushing teeth. This was the first place these animals were ever discovered uh, to science. So that's what makes the fossil hills and agate fossil beds really so iconic. Scientists believe the prehistoric mammals died during a period of climate change, a warming trend that caused a mega drought. This was the last water hole in the area, and so it's too far away to go find food, so they just lie down and die in mass, much like we see animals doing in East Africa today during periods of drought. So you have a large death scene, and then the carnivores come in and, and just have a field day. Whether this happened all together or whether it happened in phases, you know, over hundreds of years, uh, I'm not sure we know that, but what we do know is that these animals were found in massive numbers uh, in what truly is, is a large death assemblage here on these two hills. Agate Fossil Beds National Monument is also known for its collection of 500 plus Native American artifacts. In 1874, when James Cook successfully mediated the agreement for passage between paleontologists O.C. Marsh and Red Cloud, it marked the beginning of a lifelong friendship between the Oglala chief and the cowboy rancher and they would get passes from the government to come off the reservation and stay around the Cook Ranch. They would uh, conduct traditional ceremonies and dances and think a good time was probably head by all. This irreplaceable assemblage of Lakota cultural history is a result of gifts given to James Cook over several years. There's a rich legacy of the Oglala and other visiting uh, tribal members actually presenting to Cook and his family uh, just magnificent uh, pieces of American Indian material culture and artifacts. Along a quiet highway in the far corner of Nebraska, you can go off the grid at Agate Fossil Beds and step back in time to see where ancient antelope played and magnificent buffalo once roamed. <laughs>